Yeah, in previous session, we have discussed about constraint satisfaction problem, uh, application of constraint satisfaction problem with respect to Sudoku puzzle. In today's session, let's discuss about one more, one more important concept of uh, constraint satisfaction problem. In previous session, I already said that we will be discussing about this concept in the upcoming session. Like what is this problem? Uh, how, how, uh, how typical this problem can be and how we need to add some intelligence to a machine with respect to logical understanding. That's what we will be seeing in today's session. And upon completion of crypt arithmetic problem, let's discuss about next concept called as game playing in AI because uh, the major application of uh, uh, artificial intelligence is with respect to game playing. And let's see how the concept of AI uh, can be applied with respect to game playing and there we'll be trying to learn uh, two more algorithms uh, one of them which is already discussed in the initial sessions that is about TikTok toy problem there we have learned about min max algorithm so today we will try to cover that one more time as part of your game playing and also after that uh, in the next session probably we will be trying to cover alpha beta pruning uh, with, uh, with which we will be completing our unit one okay so the all the concepts whatever you're going to discuss you can see a common outcome which i'm going uh, explaining every time because the problems whatever you're going to uh, you have understood till now they need to be applied with respect to problem solving in various games it, it can be game or it can be knowledge presentation so all these concepts are very important as part of your application so try to understand the logic properly pro properly here so that in the next uh, upcoming uh, years you need to apply them as part of your projects and uh, problem solving strategies okay yeah so this is what is the overview of whatever we have discussed in the previous session that is about constraint satisfaction problem where you will be having some variables some discrete domain uh, we call it as domain where you have discrete values in, uh, with respect to your ai we have some constraints so we have seen uh, a, a deep concept of what is bfs and what is gfs which already uh, been covered in the previous session and how these concepts play a major or key role as part of any uh, sort of strategy. Okay, so we have also discussed about why uh, people consider AI as hard or difficult because of improper understanding of the logic. Uh, they try to, they they they, they will not try to uh, make forward for the upcoming sessions. Okay, so uh, these were the applications what we have discussed uh, as part of your constraint satisfaction uh, satisfaction problem. The quiz or the poll, whatever I have asked is from this slide only, uh, the answers were uh, need to be uh, given from this word. Uh, okay, so today as part of our session, uh, we will be seeing at this problem called as script arithmetic, that is coding alphabets to numbers. Let's see about that in the uh, next slides. This was one of the application. So the people who haven't uh, given me uh, crossword as the uh, application, you need to once uh, ensure that we have discussed about this also in the previous session. Okay. Sudoku is one example, what we have seen. Yeah. So graph coloring is one more example, which we need to answer as part of examinations. Okay. So this, this is what we have discussed in the previous session. So now in today's session, let's uh, get deep into the concept of uh, uh, constraint satisfaction problem. And uh, one, one important application of constraint satisfaction problem is script arithmetic problem with respect to your AI. So this problem is very, very important guys, because uh, in the upcoming, uh, as you are in the third year of your uh, session, you, you will be moving on for the CRT sessions and you'll be part of your placements where you'll be uh, asked uh, about during the campus recruitment training or during your campus selections, you will be asked such type of questions. They are completely logical questions where you need to apply your logics properly and then get some solutions. So in today's concept, uh, whatever you're going to discuss is one very important concept. It's not only important as part of your AI, it's a general concept which will be also applicable for your upcoming uh, projects, upcoming CRT sessions, upcoming uh, interview questions also. So try to focus uh, on this concept because I, I don't say that this concept is very simple to understand. If you are good at your uh, thinking, uh, thinking abilities, it will be easy for you. If not, you need to concentrate well and try to understand the concept. Okay. Yeah. So uh, starting with this concept. So this is also, as I said, this is a script uh, arithmetic problem is a constraint satisfaction problem. It's like a game only guys, where uh, the concept is something like the game is about digits and its unique replacement either with alphabets or 
symbols. I'll just show you an example of what we're discussing without getting any confusion. So this is the example uh, what we will be discussing uh, as part of your crypt arithmetic problem. Here uh, you can see uh, you can see two words. Send is one word plus more second word. So when you are combining these two words, I'm getting answer as money. So the the concept the question is something like that. So how you are going to get this uh, solution? What is the logic behind this? So these type of questions will be asked uh, for you guys in the upcoming sessions. So there's this is a simple logic here. We need to because we are here. You can see only alphabets are being discussed. So send comprises of four alphabets. More comprises of four alphabets. Uh, but the result is something like five alphabets. So how you are going to get such type of things? That is what is the questionnaire. What you are going to uh, make sure that we'll be finding some solution. Okay. Before going on, for example, let's try to understand the problem uh, clearly. And what are the set of rules we need to uh, we need to ensure? And what are the constraints we need to follow to get some solution? Okay. So uh, as discussed, uh, the game is about digits. And its unique replacement either with alphabets or any symbols. So in our example, we are going with some alphabets. So sometimes there will be some symbols also. Okay. So in crypto arithmetic problem, the digits zero to nine get substituted by some possible alphabets or symbol. Yeah. So you can see there the words were given like send and more. Those are the alphabets. We need to uh, understand it with respect to some digits. So every alphabet will be having a unique digit. That's what is the logic behind the solution what we are going to obtain. Okay, the task is uh, in CSP uh, or in cryptothematic problem, we need to substitute a digit with an alphabet. That is uh, there in the first word, word S, you have seen send, there you are having S. S will be having some value. And suppose if I say uh, in the first word, I am having an alphabet called as S, in the second word, I also am having the alphabet called as S both should have the same value uh, two a word cannot have two different types of digits that is one important thing okay so we will see that as part of our rules uh, so we can perform any arithmetic operations for the given problem and we need to get some solution so it can be uh, addition or it can be uh, anything and we need to get some solution so depending on the question asked it can be addition or it can be subtraction you need to get some uh, you need to follow the basic arithmetic problem sometimes it can be multiplication also and you need to get your solution. So as part of our example, we'll be just talking about your uh, addition problems because we are not uh, focusing more on this concept only. We're just trying to find out what is the example of constraint satisfaction problem. So even examinations, they may ask you some basic questions like uh, addition only. They will not be going for uh, subtraction or multiplication problems. So upon your interest, you can try to focus on them also in your with your understanding. Okay. Uh, the rules uh, what we need to ensure as part of your constraint satisfaction problem are uh, some important concepts guys there should be a unique digit as i said in the first word uh, previous uh, in the here suppose you can see here uh, in the first word you are having a letter e s e and e and you can see e is uh, available here and also in the second word you are also again having e both these e values should be a same value suppose if i say e carries a value of one suppose if i say e is one or e is two in first letter first word e should be one and in second word also e should be one there should not be change in the value of e that's what is the first rule what we need to ensure that is there should be a unique digit to be replaced with a unique alphabet so every alphabet should have a unique value that is the first rule what we need to keep in your mind and second rule uh, the addition or the arithmetic rules whatever you are going to define are very simple as generally if i say 2 plus 2 equal to 4 or 2 plus 3 is equal to 5 that is the mathematic arithmetic operations what you are going to uh, what you already know in the same manner suppose if i say e plus o is equal to n which actually follows a my arithmetic logic. We will see about this logic in the uh, upcoming slides. And next concept, uh, next point, next important constraint or next important rule is the uh, digit should be from zero to nine only. You cannot carry uh, it, it is only some uh, real numbers from zero to nine. It's not like I can take value as 11, 12, or something like that. It should only carry a single digit number that is either zero to one, two, three, or nine. Okay, that is one important constraint what we need to ensure. Next. 
there should be only one carry forward while performing the addition that is suppose if i say the value of e is 6 and value of uh, o is 7 6 plus 7 is 13 i cannot write 13 in the answer i can it's like only addition the basic addition rule one will be carried to the previous session and three will be carried here okay so let's see about that in the upcoming slides when we discuss about the example the problem can be solved from both the sides that is from left hand side or the right hand side so you need to uh, keep these things in your mind guys so uh, probably everybody of you can take a screenshot of these rules because while talking about the uh, example these things will be very useful for you to understand the example okay so we, i'll try to explain each point clearly in the example so everybody uh, need to understand these rules properly what are the constraints uh, which we need to apply for the so, uh, problem what you are going to discuss to get some solution i hope everybody is uh, clear with this and i'll go for the example okay so now let's discuss about this example so the problems uh, such type of problems it can be arithmetic or uh, whatever operations plus minus or into uh, when you are trying to understand with respect to some alphabets these are called as script arithmetic problems so here you are having two different words and when they are combined you are getting a solution called as a third different word so how is this possible what is the logic behind this and how uh, we need to understand the logic and how we need to train an intelligent machine to make this understand that is what is the concept about your constraint satisfaction problem okay and you can see uh, one important uh, condition here guys in the given question it will be like solve if each letter is a distinct digit you need to understand that each letter is a distinct digit and uh, the, the solution you are having a word called as money and m should not be equal to zero that is one important condition the solution the solution should be from one to nine not from zero to nine that is the m value will be like only from zero to uh, from one to nine not from zero so it will not start from zero that is one important uh, condition which you need to ensure as part of this question okay uh, can i move forward guys anybody can just respond uh, is everything clear the question or should i uh, stress more on the question if you are clear, clear with the question i can move forward with the solution how this can be achieved so yeah yes sir okay yeah thank you so uh, let's again uh, say one of you asked to explain again once more okay fine next uh, we'll be uh, again discussing about what is the problem here guys okay so a uh, crypt arithmetic problem basically deals with alphabets and digits so you will be given question like this guys like you will be given two different words and here you can see the question is given as plus send plus more should lead to a solution called as money that is the question as part of our understanding so here it can be plus or it can be minus or it can be into any arithmetic operations can be asked but uh, as part of our syllabus we are only discussing about uh, the application of constraint satisfaction problem so the we will we'll be having a limitation only till plus operation we will not carry it forward because of the time constraint limitations so the question will be asked like this so uh, when given two different words and the solution is called as money here how this can be possible what is the logic behind this how these alphabets are leading to a solution so with respect to that uh, there are some uh, different rules or constraints which we need to uh, ensure or follow to get some solution the constraints are like this the first the first constraint is there should be a unique digit to be replaced with a unique alphabet suppose uh, in the question you can see in the first word you are having a letter called as e and also in the second word you are having the same letter called as e e should know e should carry a value a same value in complete solution suppose if i say the value of e is equal to 2 in send the value of e should be uh, 2 in the more also they should not be changed that is what you call it as a unique digit value and next one is the arithmetic value uh, the arithmetic operations what are you going to carry they should follow the conditions that is suppose if i say the value of s is 9 or value of s is 8 and m value is 2 8 plus 2 equal to 10 that's how uh, it should be taken forward okay 
so i'll explain about that step by step in the next uh, upcoming slides don't worry about that so uh, digits should be only from 0 to 9 it should, it's not like i'll take the value of 10 or i'll take the value of 100 the value should uh, follow the basic rule that is 0 to 9 there should be only one carry forward that is uh, if i say uh, value of e is 5 and value of o is 6 e plus o is 6 plus 5 is 11 so there will be a carry that is the basic rule of your addition we cannot write n value as 11 so every value it can be a solution or it can be a question it should only have a value of 0 to 9 it should not go beyond that okay that is one important rule and next the problem can be solved from uh, left hand side or right hand side it is upon your understanding you can solve it anyway the solution should be a proper one so uh, i hope this is clear guys now let's see about how this solution can be achieved okay so once the question is clear uh, we can go for the solution because if question is not clear definitely the solution will not be a proper understanding for you so b2 uh, i hope your question is uh, your understanding is now clear or should i uh, stress more yeah b2 okay fine so now let's uh, carry forward with the solution how this can be achieved so as i said this can be taken from left side or also from right side anything can be done so initially for this problem i am starting from the starting only starting phase only yeah so let's see the first step uh, how to understand this problem so how to understand this problem and how we need to take uh, get some solution so guys uh, one thing should be kept in your mind the solution can be achieved in two different ways so i am going to discuss the solution as part of a, a general understanding a very simple understanding but uh, some people try to address the same uh, solution in different manner like uh, they will be taking the digits place suppose if i say uh, in the in the in the word called as send d is at the ones position n is at the tenth position e is at the hundredth position s at the thousand position that's how people try to understand but that is uh, a difficult stage of understanding so keep that aside and like now let's follow the basic arithmetic addition properties and try to understand the solution okay yeah the first step goes like this guys we are starting from the left hand side of our uh, question so as i said you can start from left hand side or right hand side there is no matter you need to get some solution so we will try to understand it step by step so initially from the question i'll be taking two different uh, alphabets from two different words from first letter first word i am taking s and second word i am taking m and the result order i am getting is m o because that is the final phase s plus m should lead to o as i said uh, s can take values from 0 to 9 m can take values from 0 to 9 but in the solution in the question it is very clear that m should not take a value of 0 because that is the final solution m should not have a value of 0 m can take value of 1 to 9 only so uh, s plus m should lead to two solutions that is m and o that is a two digit number so it's very simple guys uh, if you are understanding the mathematical understanding here because m should not be 0 i cannot take m as 0 so initially i am taking the value of m as 1 so uh, because i need to get two uh, uh, the solution as m and o that is a two digit number so s, s should be only 9 i cannot take s as 8 because 8 plus 1 leads to 9 so i hope this point is clear for you how i am taking the values s plus m that is one word a uh, one letter plus other letter should lead to a two letter that is m o that's why and the condition is m should not be zero other letters can be zero so s plus m should lead to m o so that's how i'm saying that the value of s is 9 and value of m is 1 which is leading to 10 that is 1 0 that's why m value is 1 s value is 9 and from the solution you can get that o value is obtained as 0 automatically we are not taking o value randomly o value is obtained from the solution so from this step we have obtained values from for three different letters that is s is m uh, 9 m is 1 and o is 0 
so uh, is this clear guys how i am taking this uh, values any any disturbances or any uh, sort of confusions you can just uh, respond so that uh, i'll be trying to clear this point because if you are understanding this point properly the next the next solution will be easy for us so any uh, difficulties okay once again definitely yeah okay so uh, here from the question uh, from the question it is very clear that i am having uh, first word as send second word as more and the result should be money so as i said you can start your solution from left hand side or that is i can take s plus m and lead to solution or i can take d plus e and get some y it can be in any manner there is no uh, sort of things okay so you are getting confused near your s plus m leading to m o okay yeah i'll just go to that slide so this is your understanding guys let's again start from the initial phase forget about the text what is displayed there so initially uh, i am taking my first condition that the first two letters in the two different words that is s plus m these two letters when added should to le should lead a solution called as m o so think about the values here not about the letters how s plus m will lead to m o that is the question you need to understand it mathematically with respect to your logic that is that these two values these two digit these two letters will be having a digit you can take any digit of your choice between 0 to 9 but you need to get a solution at the end that is it should lead to a uh it, it should follow the constraint whatever we have taken that is there should be a unique value for each digit that is if i take value as uh, s uh, equal to 9 that 9 value cannot be allotted to any other uh, letter in the given word so i think uh, this is clear suppose if i say s value is 9 if i take it randomly this is a randomly taken values guys i am not taking Uh, it upon my choice it can be like you can take the value of s is equal to 0 s equal to 1 s equal to 2 it's up to you but when added with the next alphabet it should it should lead to a solution okay so uh, once upon completion of your complete uh, solution you will be having clarity if not again i will repeat this okay so now i am taking the uh, and the condition what is given to us uh, is this m should not be equal to 0 so m should take only values from 1 to 9 that's why initially uh, and you can see the solution here s plus m lead to m o and uh, okay so people who are getting confused here why are getting a two letter word okay if we add two letters output should it be 10 so it's not that it should be 10 you should get a two letter word that is m and o is the solution about here suppose example i'll be going for next slide yeah here you can see e plus o is leading to n here you are not getting two words here it's only one word that is according to the question here see you can here you can see uh, d plus e should lead to y n plus r should lead to e e plus o should lead to n s plus m should lead to m o only the left hand side the last one will be your two digit so how you will be actually getting so basically if i say uh, if you are adding four digit number 9999 plus 8888 if you are adding definitely get a five, five digit letter uh, solution right in the same manner you are having a four digit word here in the first word so consider that as four nines in your understanding or 9876 or m o r e can be 1234 so you'll be getting some solution in the same manner you'll be getting a five letter uh, five letter solution for this four letter uh, additions okay think it in that manner and you'll be understanding the solution okay so only in the left hand side s plus m you're getting a two uh, two letter solution but upon your next step suppose if you are taking here e plus o you are only getting one solution that is n similarly n plus r is e that is d plus e is y that is what is the understanding guys so is it clear now or still any confusions so if still any confusions uh, once upon completion of example i'll again uh, try to explain you all guys don't worry about that okay so initially 
uh, try to understand here i am taking two letters uh, one is s and one is m according to the question given only not about according to my choice according to the question given only the first letter of your first word is s the first letter of your second word is m s plus m should lead to a solution called as m o according to that solution only uh, m should not have a value of 0 so i have taken a value as 1 why can't why can't i take it as 2 sir why can't i take it as 2 so if you are taking a value as 2 here definitely you can take the value of uh, m as 2 but if i say 9 plus 2 is 11 so what will be answer m will be 1 it will be uh, but uh, in the solution it will be 1 and in the question it will be again as uh, it will be it will be as 1 but o will be leading to 12 so uh, you can take it like this also okay but m value should be only 1 it can, it cannot be 1 in the solution it cannot be 2 in the other place it should follow a basic rule that is the value of m should be same across the complete solution that's why to meet that criteria to meet this point the first point there should be a unique digit to be replaced unique digit means m should have a value of 1 across your complete solution m cannot have other value that is your uh, clear understanding guys if this point is clear then next of the things will be clear for us okay so keep this uh, first step in your mind sir if you assume uh, any number to alphabets then what should be assuming the number in the result uh, p2 uh, that is right uh, like you can assume any number as i said now m can be 1 m can be 2 m can be 3 it is up to you you can take any value of m but uh, in the solution in the uh, you can see m and o as two different letters don't combine this it is not 10 here it is uh, m is 1 o is 0 the value is not 10 guys here uh, basically if you are talking mathematically 9 plus 1 should lead to 10 but understand it alphabetically m takes the value of 1 o takes the value of 0 here so m value should be 1 across your complete solution that's how you need to take your values so as i said s value can be 8 also s value can be 7 also but if i take the value of s as 8 and m as 1 the answer will be 9 and uh, here in the solution you are having two digits that is m and o so definitely you need to have two digits two alphabets should have two digits that's why solution is 10 or you can say 1 and 0 m is 1 and o is 0 okay so once let's carry forward uh, for your clear understanding i'll be just showing the uh, else case also if, if there is a problem what is else that's why i'll show you now yeah so now let's look at this thing here this clear understanding okay so here uh, you can see now move ahead to next term that is e and o so once s plus m is completed and i got a result called as m o now i'll go for the next step that is e plus o should lead to n okay that is the criteria now e plus o should lead to n suppose if i say uh, the value of e is equal to 5 because o already we called as 0 from here uh, solution you can say the value of o is equal to 0 so this is the same o will be carried uh, o equal to 0 will be carried out to the next solution so if i say e plus o should lead to n 5 plus 0 is again equal to 5 so this solution is not correct why because according to the first constraint both digits should not have the same value if i take e value as 5 and o value as 0 it is leading to a solution called as n is equal to 5 e is equal to 5 and n equal to 5 is not possible that is two letters should not have same value okay so is this clear guys that's why this solution is not preferred we need to think it in other manner and try to get a solution so how to think so basically uh, when i talk about addition suppose if i say uh, 9999 plus 8888 okay that will be uh, having a carries right in the same manner think it with respect to your addition or arithmetic operation so uh, if i take one carry here so carry means 5 if i take the value of 5 e is 5 
O is see the condition is here according to our solution we need to take the value of E as phi and O as uh, zero because O is zero is fixed according to the previous step. E will be taking the value of phi. So we need to take something like carry. That is suppose here if I say uh, how I am getting a carry here you can see uh, n value is 6 and r value is 8. 8 plus 6 is leading to 14. So you will be getting a carry. Uh, the, the one will be carried to this place. It's very simple guys. Uh, forget about uh, letters here. Think about your basic addition about four digit addition. When I am taking four digit addition four plus four digit addition it should lead to a five digit addition. The result should be a five digit word like 9 plus 7. 9 plus 7 is 16 taking 6 and 1 as carry in the same manner I should think accordingly and carry should be taken only as 1 okay it should not be like uh, more than that because you are talking about the values from 0 to 9 uh, I cannot say like 9 plus 9 is the 18 that is the maximum right the 1 will be a carry the maximum carry is only 1 okay yeah so because the above solution is not possible that is uh, 5 plus 0 leading to 5 is not possible I am going for the next next solution that is next constraint that is I can take a carry. The carry here is 1. That's why the value of E is 5 and value of O is 0 leading to a value of 6. So with this I am getting two more things that is E value is fixed to 5, O value is fixed to 0 according to the previous step and N value is leading to a new uh, solution that is N equal to 6. So that is the unique value allocated to each variable that is s value is 9 fixed m value is equal to 1 fixed o is equal to 0 fixed e is equal to 5 fixed and n is equal to 6 now uh, the five letters are fixed now we should think about the next letters how this can be taken forward so now let's see about uh, adding n plus r should lead to e that is E value is already fixed to 5. Okay. The solution should lead to 5. And I should take the N value as 6. That is again fixed. N plus R should lead to a value called as 15 or because uh, or 5. So N is already 6. 6 plus addition of some number should lead to a solution called as 5. So it is 15 here according to addition, but one will be carried forward. So think it as 5. That's why. Uh, the n value is 6 fixed here, e is 5 fixed. That is the next option is I am also having a carry on the top. That is why I am take and also I cannot take the value as r equal to 9 because s is already taking the value of 9. That's why I need to take a carry here. That's how we will be getting some solution. Okay. So this is how I am getting the value as 15 and 1 is carried forwards. Here the arrow arrow at the bottom indicates that it is a carry forward it is taken the one value is taken to the next phase okay yeah now you can see the final one that is d plus e should lead to y so d value we have we didn't get it till now and y value we didn't get till now so we have got the value of r is equal to 8 in the previous step now the value of e is fixed 5 and we didn't get a value of y and we didn't get a value of uh, d also. Now, uh, with respect to the value what you are having that is phi, you need to get your solution. That is, uh, I can take the d value as uh, 7 or even 2 also. But phi plus 2 is not equal to, we need to have a carry again here. So because uh, if you are adding 7 with phi, you are getting a value of 12 and 1 can be carried forward. That, that's the reason you're getting y value is equal to 2. So at the end of your solution, this should be your final answer, guys. Each letter should have a unique value. In the final result, what are you are getting? Each result or each alphabet should represent a unique value. Sir, so can we assume D for 6? Definite no, because n value is already 6 n value is already taken that is 6 we cannot take d value as 6 apart from these values that is 0 here 3 is not taken so 3 can be taken for d but 
if you are taking the value of d is equal to 3 is it leading to solution or not suppose uh, see here guys yeah if i take the d value as 3 here 3 plus 5 is equal to 8 so but i am not getting a carry because in the previous step i have taken a carry definitely it should be greater than 6 only 6 is not possible it should be greater than 6 so it should, if it is greater than 6 7 is already taken, 8 is already taken, 9 already taken. So you're having the value as only 7. That's how you will be getting your solution. So once you understand it uh, arithmetically, the addition problem with respect to some alphabets, this is how you get a solution. So definitely, as I said, this is not so easy to understand. You need to practice it. Then only you will be getting your solution. This is the first uh, first level of understanding so it will take some time guys uh, i don't i don't say that 100% uh, everybody will be uh, able to catch this logic but this is how crypt arithmetic logics will be available and the same type of questions will will be asked for you as part of your interview when you are talking about your uh, aptitude questions uh, this this questions will be part of your aptitude questions so try to think it logically so how i am getting some solution okay so uh, for your uh, for your purpose so people who are confused with the concept let's summarize this concept with this uh, uh, example how a uh, crypt arithmetic problem is part of a uh, constraint satisfaction problem so here we are having some constraints so here you are having these words called as send plus more should lead to money so according talking to with respect to your constraint satisfaction problem there you are having variables here s e n all these are called as variables domain domain includes all the elements including your solution constraints constraint here are you need to go with your addition uh, adding two different uh, alphabets should lead to a different alphabet that is with respect to unique assignment of your values that is up to your choice how you are able to get and i am not saying that the solution whatever i got this is the only solution upon your uh, own understanding you can take the value or you can change the values also but you need to follow the constraint it should be a unique value so uh, if anybody try try to solve the same problem and if you are getting a different values also, it is accepted. It's not that S value should be only 9. It can be anything also, but it should lead to your solution. That's what is your understanding. Okay. So according to that, this is your solution, guys. So I am talking, taking from left hand side. You can start it from here only. So initially only you can take it here. Uh, D plus E should take the value of Y. So you can say, D, uh, D value can be 1, E can be 2, and Y can be 3. You can start it from here only. But once you move from left hand side or right hand side to the left hand side, you should have a unique solution that's also accepted. So, what is the solution we are getting? This is not a final uh, only solution. This is a final solution, but this is not, not only solution. You can type, you can take your own values and try to prove the answer that is also accepted. Okay, so I hope uh, now everybody is uh, cleared your confusions so that uh, if you are interested, this is again one more uh, questions what you can take for your assignment or for your uh, it's only for your understanding. It's not assignment submission. So people who have understood the concept of uh, send plus more is equal to money can take these questions as part of your assignment or as part of your problem solving and try to get a solution then you may get your own understanding. I have given a question and I also gave you an answer. Try to get the solution in your own understanding. Then you will be, uh, it will be leading you to the understanding of your problem. Okay. So if any more uh, doubts about this, uh, this concept, once you are solving this and if you are uh, stuck or you are having any problem, we can discuss about this in tomorrow session also. Okay. Uh, so it has taken our complete session uh, to cover your crypt arithmetic problem only. So we haven't discussed about game playing concept today. So hopefully uh, tomorrow uh, next session, we'll be trying to discuss about game playing session. So thank you for the day guys. Uh,